This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about how Bitcoin FUD goes away forever. FUD is just fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and Bitcoiners often refer to it to answer criticisms of Bitcoin. People are very worried about, will Bitcoin scale? Does Bitcoin use too much energy? These sort of questions are called FUD. I want to talk about a concept that's been appearing on Twitter lately called Eternal September. This used to refer to the internet. So in the early days, the internet was basically populated by scientists, college students, professors, government employees. And then what would happen is every September when kids went to college, you'd get a lot of college freshmen beginning to learn how to use the internet. And they would come in and they'd be a little bit rowdy and they'd uh, sort of change the experience. And then what happened in the September of 1994, which is what's called Eternal September, AOL and other companies began to democratize and open up the internet to everybody. And what happened, according to this Urban Dictionary article, some soon the new users vastly outnumbered their predecessors and nonsense and flame wars became the norm. This phenomenon is referred to as eternal September as the uptick of new users has not ended, nor will it end in, foreseeable, in the foreseeable future. And I think we're experiencing something similar happening, sort of an echo revolution with Bitcoin. We're experiencing eternal September where every cycle there are more and more newcomers coming. And basically in every bull market, there's this whole new class of noobs like I was in 2019. They entered the space for the first time. And as I said, they're extremely worried about FUD. Things like, is Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme? Does Bitcoin have intrinsic value? Will Bitcoin scale? Is Bitcoin actually scarce since you can keep dividing it? That's actually the worst piece of FUD where they think that a pizza can be infinite just because you can divide it into lots of very small pieces. Nevertheless, this is something that people worry about. And then of course, does Bitcoin use too much energy? Unfortunately, much of this FUD is the direct result of advertising campaigns funded by ship coiners, by altcoiners, who attack Bitcoin in order to promote their own crypto as the quote unquote solution. This is what the Ripple guys have been doing to Bitcoin. They've been funding Bitcoin and trying to force people to change Bitcoin's code so that it runs on proof of stake. Ripple co-founder Chris Larson is guilty of getting together with Greenpeace to try to push this through. So a lot of the FUD is driven by the enemies of Bitcoin. But the question we're, we're discussing here is, are we doomed to have to keep answering the same beginner Bitcoin questions again and again? Bitcoin is indeed complicated. And so the problem is, is Bitcoin doomed if we can't convince everyone or explain Bitcoin in simple terms that everyone can understand? And then there's a problem. How can we even convince busy people who don't give two raps about Bitcoin? or economics? And I think I have a few answers to these questions, which is what I want to discuss in today's video. The first answer is that some of this will be fixed by the incentives. So for example, when BlackRock has a large successful Bitcoin spot ETF, as it will soon by the end of this year or sometime next year, BlackRock will be highly incentivized not to FUD Bitcoin and its energy usage. In fact, it appears that BlackRock may already be backpedaling on ESG and probably for this reason. BlackRock backs fewer ESG proposals and this article, BlackRock's Fink, says that he stopped using weaponized term ESG. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe button and tell a friend. And so what we see with BlackRock and what we'll see with more and more institutions that end up owning Bitcoin, for example, Michael Saylor used to criticize Bitcoin on Twitter in 2013 or 2014, there's a famous tweet. And now obviously he's come on, come on over to the right side and he's one of Bitcoin's largest allies. And so as more and more people and institutions and corporations own Bitcoin, there will be fewer and fewer people who want to criticize it because no one is gonna FUD their own bags. Also, many of Bitcoin's current critics are part of the current gerontocracy that has us under its boot in America, and these critics will simply age out. In other words, they're going to go join their crappy fellow Keynesians and Cantillionaires in the great beyond, so we won't have to worry about them. But what about the great quote unquote unwashed masses like your stubborn uncle, your friends who've been ignoring Bitcoin since you first told them about it in 2017? How are we ever going to bring these people into Bitcoin and answer all of their FUD? I don't think we're going to need to, and here's why because when you're swimming towards a lifeboat, its seaworthiness and construction become secondary concerns. You're not thinking about lifeboat FUD at that moment. Instead, you're trying to get out of the cold water and into the boat so that you don't die. And this is what's been happening with Tether, with USDT, which is a US dollar quote unquote stable coin, and with Bitcoin as well organically 
over the past few years in countries with hyperinflation, countries like Argentina, countries like Lebanon, where locals are now mining Bitcoin and buying groceries with Tether. This was unimaginable even a few years ago. Now, as for Tether using a centralized ruggable currency like USDT that is attached to a melting ice cube like the US dollar and something like USDT that can be frozen at any time and it runs on top of a crappy network like Tron or Ethereum or something like this, this is not ideal. But for the people in these countries, it's still a lot better than the local government fiat currency in Argentina, in Lebanon, in Turkey, in a lot of these countries that are experiencing hyperinflation. So now imagine a world where people have also lost faith in the US dollar. They're not going to want Tether and they're not going to want USDT as, as their lifeboat. Instead, they're going to want Bitcoin because Bitcoin's the largest, it's the most liquid, it's the most credible, it's the most decentralized cryptocurrency with the longest history. So it also benefits from what's called the Lindy effect. Something similar happened with the internet. This note says that only 1% of the world's population and 14% of Americans were using the internet by 1995, even though it was invented in 1983. But just a decade or so later, most Americans were using the internet and they certainly are now. So why did all these people all of a sudden start using the internet? It's not that everyone suddenly became educated about TCP IP and SMTP and all the internet protocols and the internet's plumbing. Rather, the internet user experience improved and people learned that if they ignored email, if they ignored Google search, if they ignored YouTube videos and other superpowers that the internet gave them, they felt they were going to fall behind their friends and their colleagues and their coworkers, both when it came to pleasure and to productivity. Today, 99% of the people probably who use the internet have no idea how it actually works. I have a vague idea, but I don't really understand it either. I think the same will be true of Bitcoin someday. So early adopters studied how the internet's plumbing worked and you really had to be a hobbyist or a geek in the early days. Similarly, now early adopters of Bitcoin study it in depth and attempt to answer Bitcoin FUD. But in the future, I don't think any of this will be necessary, especially in the context of high global inflation, which, which I expect to continue as long as central banks are still around. When there's high inflation, people will flee to Bitcoin and they'll hear about Bitcoin from their friends, from their family, from their coworkers, and they will buy and use Bitcoin with nary a thought about Bitcoin FUD. I've always wanted to use that word nary in a video and I finally found a way. At some point, everyone will be using BTC just like they use the US dollar today. Not because they understand how the US dollar works. The plumbing for the US dollar is incredibly complicated. Not because they understand how the US dollar works or how Bitcoin works, but simply because everyone else is using it. Today, everyone uses the dollar. Tomorrow, in the future, everyone will be using Bitcoin and everyone will be using it because everyone else is using it. So that's the power of what are called network effects. And Bitcoin, the monetary network, will benefit from these network effects, just like all other technological innovations. There's no other cryptocurrency in the world that can now catch up with Bitcoin's network effects. So if you're holding Caspa or Hedera or some other coin that's 14 years too late, you're going to be left holding the bag, unfortunately. It doesn't matter if you think the technology is better. Bitcoin already has global brand, a global brand, global recognition, and huge adoption with adoption increasing. And if you're just starting a currency, a new cryptocurrency in the last couple of years, it's never going to catch up with Bitcoin's head start. So what about CBDC, central bank digital currencies that are issued by central banks and that are used for purposes of surveillance and control? There's already a CBDC in China. The UK is talking about rolling one out. The US is making plans to study it. Won't CBDCs make it impossible to buy Bitcoin? Can't the government close the crypto exchanges, close the Bitcoin exchanges, and then program CBDC so that you are unable, that you cannot buy Bitcoin with them? Yes, definitely this is true, but this is what people will do. They'll take their US dollar CBDC, they'll buy a lawnmower or something even cooler than a lawnmower, and then they'll sell that lawnmower to a Bitcoiner for Bitcoin. Or maybe they'll just mow the Bitcoiner's lawn and earn Bitcoin. So there are lots of ways to get Bitcoin. And in the future, instead of buying Bitcoin, you'll earn Bitcoin. In the future, instead of selling Bitcoin, you will spend Bitcoin. This is what it means when the world is on a Bitcoin standard. I think the CBDC experience will be similar to when the government made marijuana illegal. It's not like everyone stopped smoking it for 70 years. And human beings will find a way if they really, really want 
or need something, especially when they realize they've been trapped inside of CBDCs, which is really slave money, only Bitcoin offers freedom money. And it's this contrast that will also drive so many people into Bitcoin who never cared about it before, who fudded it, who had all these worries. At that point, all Bitcoin FUD will be gone. There's not going to be a video on YouTube this Thursday or Friday because I'm going to be at the Pacific Bitcoin Conference in Los Angeles in sunny Santa Monica. So if you're there, please come up and say hello. I'd like to meet as many of you as possible. This is the first Bitcoin conference that I'll be speaking at. I'll be there all day in person on Thursday and Friday, and I'd love to meet as many of you as are there. The first day I'll be speaking on Thursday, October 5th, I will be speaking at 110 as part of a panel that includes uh, Phil Champagne, Bob Burnett, moderated by BTC Sessions at 110. So come by and uh, watch that if you want. It's only 25 minutes, and then you can stop by and say hello after that. Otherwise, I'll be going to all the parties, and I'll be circulating, going to many of the lectures and panels as well. And I'm really looking forward to both the conference, which promises to be a way to meet many of your fellow Bitcoiners, and also to meet fellow plebs. So really looking forward to that. And I'll see you guys on YouTube, probably Saturday at the earliest with a fresh video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.